How's it going everyone? It is Drake. We're back with another fairy tale video with the gold owl slash Vernus arc wrapping up. I kind of want to make a video encompassing this whole arc. And this is going to cover up to fairy tale 100 year quest chapter 152. And there were some definite choices in this arc, and I'm going to point out the things I found to be good and things I found to be bad. I'm not going to be, you know, ripping into it saying that this is the worst thing ever. I think there is some very good constructive criticism you can give to this series to, you know, improve it and make it something more that we all love. So starting off with the good parts of this Gold Owl arc, I initially really liked the team up of Jalal and Sabretooth joining the main team. I thought that was a very cool combination and there could be some cool, you know, possibilities with it. And I'll save kind of how that went for the bad section of this arc. But initially them joining this arc was a cool thing. And I thought it was going to lead to cool stuff. And some of the past few arcs have actually, you know, added to relationships. And the early part of this arc was kind of leaning into that again. With, you know, Natsu saving Lucy. And him, like, thinking that, like, she's getting kidnapped. I gotta go save her. Like, they're gonna do this bad stuff to her. I must protect her. I mean, it was a really cute moment with Natsu thinking that Lucy was in trouble and, you know, these bad things were happening to her and he must go protect her. And also early on, you had Urza and Jalal getting trapped in a box together, which it would have been the closest they practically literally been to each other. Even though these didn't really go anywhere, I mean, it was kind of cool to get some development, but then it got pulled away. And talking about Gold Owl themselves, they use alchemy. And I absolutely love the idea that we have a new power system in Fairy Tale. Because I absolutely loved it when we introduced curses, which really nothing has been done with curses since, and that was such a cool thing. And Alchemy initially had some cool promise with uh, Psy kind of doing Alchemy very similar to Full Metal Alchemist. And probably the biggest thing that this arc will probably be known for, for like positive things, is Jalal wanting to join Fairy Tale with him, you know, declaring that in his battle with God Serene. I think it's a very cool moment with him, you know, wanting to finally join it. I mean, when he's saying this, like, no one's around, like, he's just saying it to himself. I mean, God Serene's there, but he's about to whoop him. Technically, really, no one in the group right now knows that Jalal is technically trying to be a member of Fairy Tale right now. Going into the bad section of things, in general, the fight's not the greatest in this arc. There's a lot of, they probably shouldn't have won. Some main culprits of this are Urza, Jalal, and Natsu, with Urza going against the Signaro sisters, which she most definitely probably shouldn't have won that her you know minerva and jalal were pretty darn helpless so they really shouldn't have been able to do much in round two meanwhile urza solos them jalal defeating god serene it's a bit more iffy because gajil in the last arc got absolutely whooped by him i say it's a pretty fair assessment to say that gajil's probably stronger than jalal almost seems like he changed the type of his magic because his first you know attacks and stuff were just getting consumed by god serene but then like the end ones were actually damaging him but i really don't think he probably should have won that fight because he was getting whooped pretty badly at the beginning of it and you know god serene was able to absorb most of his attacks and then probably the biggest one that people have problems with is Natsu versus Vernus. I don't maybe so much have a problem with Natsu defeating Vernus. I actually kind of like the whole heat electricity weakness. I think that's cool. And I think that's a very unique way to defeat a dragon. And also the length. Because this is a dragon god they're fighting. And it barely went like two chapters with them fighting him and he's dead now obviously this is as of you know 
Chapter 152, maybe his spirit's still alive. I don't know. Maybe they're still fighting him and I'm just making preemptive assumptions. And I just think the soloing nature to this battle with literally everyone there to potentially help Natsu, you know, him soloing this and it not taking much time at all, I think is what brought it down. Which kind of leads into the next bit, which is Sabretooth not really doing much. And yeah, besides getting the Philosopher's Stone, they didn't really contribute much of anything to this arc. Really, there's no key wins that were determined because of Sabretooth. Maybe except for one with like Yukino, but we'll get there. It was kind of a bummer because it was them joining a main arc and them, you know, being part of the 100 year quest and they're going to help defeat this dragon and all they do is get a Philosopher's Stone. I mean, it is really sucky that you have them as a part of the arc and then you didn't really have them contribute much to where what was the point of really bringing them along in the first place? Which since we're talking about Sabretooth, this is probably the biggest bad for me personally in this whole arc and that is Yukino getting Star Dress. I genuinely do not have a problem with Yukino getting Star Dress. It's just more about how she unlocked it because I think that is the ultimate goal for Yukino to strive for. You know, that was like the pinnacle of Lucy's ability. So that should be the pinnacle of Yukino's ability because, you know, when she unlocks Star Dress, that's like a whole new power set to deal with problem I have with this and it was the problem I immediately had reading it and even when I reviewed it it takes away from the sacrifice of Lucy when you think about how Lucy unlocked star dress she had to summon three spirits to be able to summon the celestial spirit king she had to break a key to summon the celestial spirit king and only then that's when she unlocked her star dress Yes, when she's trained with it, she's kind of learned how to actually use it by putting, you know, the magic of her spirits onto herself and then, you know, she can use those abilities. So obviously when Lucy explains it to everyone, it sounds pretty simple. Like, oh, I'm just taking some of my spirits magic power and putting it onto myself. Yes, that sounds very simple. I just don't think Yukino should have done it perfectly the first time. I think y Lucy explaining it to her obviously is like, oh, that's a cool ability. I should try and learn to do that. I think her doing it perfectly twice, immediately, the first time she's ever tried it, she does it twice with her, you know, spirits. I think you should have not given her the full star dress, or even if you did it's only one and she's able to do it for like five seconds and only do like one attack. But even then, I think that's a bit much. I don't think she should have been able to do a full star dress. It should have maybe been like part of her clothes or outfit change to be like a partial star dress to where she wasn't able to fully do it. But if she keeps practicing and she keeps, you know, learning how to use her magic power correctly to do this she can fully master star dress just the fact that it was like perfect mastery right off the bat is baffling that she, like you're taking away from a amazing sacrifice that lucy did to unlock star dress and making it an absolute joke this is one of the few things that i'm like they really done messed up on how you gave yukino her star dress finally is how alchemy was actually used. So, you know, you had to explain the most when Sai was first introduced. He kind of put the building blocks for basic alchemy down, but when you get to the other members of Gold Owl, they very rarely explained how their alchemies worked. Certain ones had, you know, the smoke or iron or the Sknar sisters literally changing the world itself. Which, yes, I get they're doing, like, transmutation to, you know, affects the things around them. But I feel like for Psy, it was, like, decently explained how every ability worked. Meanwhile, everyone else, nothing. Or, for example, Duke. 
who is supposed to be like a literal god with alchemy, even the fake version. They didn't say what he really did at all. Or for example, you know, the Philosopher's Stone, which was what Sabretooth was doing. They went to go make one. They never showed how to make it. They just had it. They didn't show that alchemy. So I think it was such a wasted thing. You set it up so nicely to have this new power scale ability. We didn't do much with it. And I think you still could flesh this out, but I severely doubt they're ever going to bring this back. Overall, those are my criticisms of the Gold Owl arc. I still love this series. I still am going to be very positive towards it because I do not want to really spread much negativity because Fairy Tail gets dunked on by quite a bit of online people as it is. And I just want to put these things out here to say, hey, here's the good, here's the bad, this is what we can improve on. So hopefully this next arc will improve some things, we'll maybe do a review after that arc ends in like two years practically. What are your guys' thoughts on the Gold Owl arc? Leave it in the comments below. Thank you for watching, this is Drago, signing out.